adrenal cancer, also called adrenocortical cancer, can occur at any age, but it's most likely to affect children younger than five and adults in their 40s and 50s. Now, when adrenal cancer is found early, there is a chance for cure, but if the cancer has spread to areas beyond the adrenal gland, cure becomes less likely. And I think that also speaks for any cancer for that matter. Now, treatment can be used to delay progression or recurrence. So today, like I've mentioned, we are very pleased to be joined by cancer survivor, warrior woman, Nadia Hamildin. Let's get up close and for personal and find out a little bit more. Assalamu alaikum and welcome, Nadia. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran so much for having me. Love, love having you in the studio. And I must just say your ensemble, mashallah. <laughs> it <laughs> matches your eyes, eh? <laughs> so for those that do not know, Nadia has um, green eyes. <laughs> Does it change? You know, I have I had a teacher. Mm -hmm. So so whatever uh, uh, outfit or suit he was wearing, you know, those years the teachers wore suits, right? Yes, yes. Um, his eye color would change. Mm -hmm. Is that you? Yes. And when I'm very angry, you'll know. Because I know. My eye, Go gray. Yeah, it goes. Yeah. And sometimes if the weather, you know, is a bit and I'm feeling, oh, and then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what color is it now? Gray, right? <laughs> okay. So you're happy, right? Happy. Okay. So I'm safe. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Thank you for, for making time to speak to us. It's only but a pleasure. So. I want to know more about Nadia Hamildin. I want to know where, you know, you, it all started. So let's let's speak about, if I can, go back to your, your childhood years, your upbringing. Okay, so assalamu alaikum. And um, yeah, um, a really amazing childhood, alhamdulillah. Um, I, I was um, an adopted child at the age of four. Um, to phenomenal parents. Um, I have at the, well, I have quite a bit of siblings. So, you know, um, my siblings that I grew up with, I have four sisters and one brother. And um, obviously I was the youngest. And um, yeah, so my childhood, I think it was, it was really crazy because um, I was a very scared child. Um, my, my siblings teased me because I was even as far as colorblind. So <laughs> yet at my later stage now, I absolutely love colors. Mm. Um, and um, yes, I, I went to um, school, then I went to ICOSA. Um, and then I, you know, decided to do lots of other things, um, radio being one of it, moved on um, and of course um, find myself now with four children, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> three boys and one girl. And of course, um, 45 years of lots of uh, happiness, sorrow, um, joy, uh, comforts, uh, comforting moments, amazing people and lots of lessons. Mm, mm, mm. Um. You know, um, when you said you were adopted, um, that's a, that's even a, that's a show on its own because it, it's it's fascinating to to know, you know, um, about that part of your life. When did you get to know, if I may ask, um, that you were an adopted child? Well, I always knew um, at the because, age of four. Yeah, so I knew because you know I think that many of us think that when we are. Um, we don't know, uh, we, we, we mistake our, our children um, for not knowing things at a very young age. Yeah. Um, but I think that as I have gone for therapy, I could go far back as the age of two, remembering certain things. So um, I think that because I always knew and my parents wanted me to know, they wanted me to know because I, and now years later, I understand why. Mm. I mean, my mother played an, a, a phenomenal role in my life um, where she, I could understand, you know, very protected, um, very sheltered um, for a big part of my life. But I knew why and um, I knew why she wanted me to know. Because, you know, you, ne you need to navigate in this crazy world and you need to find yourself and your true meaning and purpose. And for me, I would not have wanted it any other way. Um, you know, people ask the question, 
there must be lots of forgiveness on this journey. And I say, yeah, absolutely, you know, because when you um, understand and you look at certain people's circumstances, as you've just mentioned earlier, you know, um, everybody's circumstances are different. And I cannot but imagine if uh, what my life would have been like if she, if my biological mother didn't do what she did. Mm -hmm. So I'm eternally grateful. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for sharing that and, and, and the lesson. There's a lesson within what you've just um, shared with us. So very grateful for that as well. So what has always been one of your biggest dream, Nadia? Sure. Um, okay, how many were there? <laughs> many, I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, um, there, were, there were many dreams. Yeah. And I think one of it is um, to be happy, to, to be content. Um, and I think more so, you know, to get to a point where you just wake up one day and you say, wow, I just feel so content. And I can actually say that's how I feel right now. Alhamdulillah. Ah, oh, it's okay. Now, I want to, I want to know um, if I, why why are you tearing up? Because sometimes you know we 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 really grateful for life, mm. but the one thing we don't do is we don't share it with the people that matter. We um, we think we know. We always you know I know why she's distant. You know, I know why she's angry. I know, but you, you always seem to know better. Yet sometimes we do not take a minute of our time to put ourselves in the next person's shoes. Mm -hmm. um, just last week, a friend of mine popped in and she was sitting in, in my kitchen. And she said, wow, is this what you do every night? And I was like, yes, this is what I do every night i mean having three children still at school is not easy um it's a task that you have to juggle and um you know uh, these you you studying it's work it's it's um you're trying to be social <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you um you know i have a side hustle it's it's so much and uh, believe me people there's always judgments so i just think you know at this point um, I, a few weeks ago, I was driving to work and I just had this instant inside of me. I was like, wow, I've never been this happy. Allah Akbar. So, yeah. So while some of us, um, you know, yes, we all would love, you know, we like people say, oh, I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to do, 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 do. We all want that. Come now. And that's realistic. We do want that. But really the reality of it because I am a realist, is that um, once you're happy and when things happen in your life, you can definitely overcome it um, by finding yourself emotionally in a better space. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. See how we get, um, you know, from one thing to the next and we, we still haven't found out what those biggest dreams were. <laughs> <laughs> so what, 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 so share what, what all those dreams. I, I think I'm living my dream, alhamdulillah. I'd love my, I, for me, um, I'm always on a journey of self-discovery. That's very important. But I have, um, I'm living a, a job every day um, where I work, alhamdulillah, for a, a very big corporation. And every day I discover more and more why I do what I do. Um, and inshallah, you know, the other dream is to go on Hajj, inshallah. Amen. I mean, Amen. Um, but that, like I said, that is all part of it, you know, just to, to be a better person, firstly, to be a better Muslim, um, to live our lives according to the way we're supposed to, mm. and to not have any regrets. Love it. Not to have any regrets. Hey, reminders coming from Nadia Hamildin. Shukur so much for that. Let's let's get into that moment, Nadia, when you first learned about the adrenal cancer diagnosis. Let's, if we can step back to that time. Um, how did it affect you emotionally and mentally? Take us through that moment when you were diagnosed and they gave you this news. So it, it was it was crazy because the one minute and this is how um, I mean my siblings um, 
they they talk about it all the time uh, one minute we were celebrating my sister's birthday um having so many laughs um the tuesday yeah. and the wednesday morning i messaged to say i'm in hospital i've been admitted this is and, now two years how yeah, long two ago, years ago two years ago yeah mm. and everybody's like mm. okay what's going on um so look i had i've always had chronic hypertension um and this day my blood, high blood pressure was 210 so sure. i walk in I, I called my doctor mm. and the best i mean Allah works in mysterious ways so my doctor you need to make an appointment to see right and that day i call her to say listen i have a pain in my one arm i just want to know because i'm hypertensive prescribe something she says no 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 it's fine um come in and see me I get there, my blood pressure's high, I, um, you know, and she's looking at me and she says, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. She <laughs> says, okay, so we're going to admit you. I'm mm. like, okay, can I first go to, and she says, no. She says, you have a choice. We're either going to get the ambulance to fetch you or you're going to drive to the hospital. Anyway, um, it was amazing. I mean, I had, a, uh, I discovered that um when i was there i was i needed to see a pulmonologist uh, mm. a pulmonologist is a lung, lung doctor yeah. yeah and um i met this man and he was a tiny little man and i'm thinking oh my goodness like you know get done already um i'm gonna go <laughs> and he says well you need to go for so many tests and i'm like doctor i'm okay and he says yeah you're okay mm. he he reassured me that i was okay I went for um, a scan yeah and I didn't understand why I went for the scan and then um, they said um, he came to me and he said that um, he, there is a growth but I cannot see where the growth is oh, oh no no sorry he says I couldn't see how big, big. the growth mm, is mm. but I'm gonna send you for a, a CT scan yeah and he explains the CT scan and I'm like okay yeah. you know it's okay um, go for the CT scan and he comes to me um, with obviously um, uh, she was she's a therapist I, I assume she was because she sat there and she afterwards told me if I needed anything um, you know mentally if I, she, if I needed to talk she was there um, and he closed the curtains and he says I need to share something with you and he said that um, from what I can see you have an 11 um, 11 centimeter tumor on mm. your adrenal gland and I say 11 centimeters and obviously he shows me the pic and it's like this massive tumor and I said to him okay doctor um so what does this mean are you gonna cut it out now and he says no Mm -hmm. So obviously, mm -hmm. you know, you've now put your, your faith into somebody and they say, no, they not going to, I need to refer you. Um, I don't think at that point, I think, uh, obviously hours later after my brother spoke to one of his friends, that's also a specialist. And I realized that, okay, this is very serious. Went to see another, um, professor, uh, Professor Paniri at um, and he then ex he, he, well I was told he'll call me in three months okay um, I was put off from work for a week and the Friday before going returning to work I get a call from Dr. Paniri's room saying I need to see him the Tuesday mm. and that's when the reality kicked in that doctor said you know this man is very busy and you know he's going to look at the report and 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 then I thought okay so this is going this is probably quite serious went to see doctor doctor said um i'm doing the op next week and he explained and he said that you know this is life th life threatening and of course in that time everything changed um you know from being okay from being a mother to you know it was all we were on the brink of ramadan so um yeah it 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 was emotionally it was um a roller coaster but the best thing that i could have had was support let's let's touch on on that you mentioned feeling of course being diagnosed with cancer um and one as 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 rare as yours i'm sure you were extremely overwhelmed so what happened was i, I first went for the operation um and 
obviously, I mean, I have I have quite a bit of siblings, and um, I mean, they were with me all the way. Uh, I, I I cannot have cannot could not have done it without them. Um, so I had the operation, and um, I remember, you know, at that time it was still it was the end of COVID, so um, oh, you oh, wow. couldn't have anybody with you. Yeah. So you sit whole day. You must be there at eight o'clock. Your operation is only at half past one, and I mean that's a thousand thoughts. Yeah, you know, people said bacha, and I was like, yes, I am <laughs> bacha. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I, I remember my oncologist, no, no, sorry, the anesthetist coming in and saying to me, um, I am prepared. I want you to know that even though um, this is life and death, I am prepared. Anything is going to happen. I've got you. Mm, wow. And I was like, okay, you know, and um, cried a bit, cried a lot, cried a lot, a lot, a lot went in um and this is a, this is something i tell so many people because there's a moral behind it um so i was wheeled in and i'm laying there and um the because i if if you know me well you know that i'm a control freak so i need to you know i think it's just when you move straight into your 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 uh, your masculine energy so i i kind of live there quite often <laughs> <laughs> and then um the the, the and the, uh, Anita just said, "Well, we're going to give you something, and we're going to count you down, and you'll fall asleep." Of course, yeah. And she gives me something. And I'm like, mm -mm, "No, what's happening here? I'm still here. Uh -uh, <laughs> I ain't going anywhere." <laughs> and um, she turn she she walks, and I see her walk away from me, but she's going around my bed, but her assistant is standing next to me with her back facing me. And I immediately have a, what we now know as a, a panic attack. Yeah, of course. But it was a panic attack that I've never experienced before. So I'm knocking onto the bed and it feels like nobody can hear me because they're standing right here. And obviously, um, if I now think back, I was knocking miss, you know, because I'm I'm drugged. So I'm supposed to be going into my sleep. Sleep, yeah. Um, then she's immediately, she turned around and she saw this and I was, I could feel my body going into a shake, you mm, know, mm. and as she moved, they moved me into the room. I immediately remember saying to myself, um, you know, Allah, if this is it, please, I, I'm, I'm, I'm content. I'm happy. I'm, I'm yours. Um, but can we make this transition, you know, like a bit different? And um, obviously, when you when you go into a surgery, there is bright lights, and um, I I recall it being that state of tawakul because the one thing we always say to each other is you must tawakul, but you have no idea what that is until you've you put into that situation, and that is that. That for me was it. I woke up a few hours. My, my operation took a lot longer than it was meant to be due to the fact that the tumor was so big. Mm. Um, and I was crying. And my siblings, they were making fun of me because they thought like, you know, why am I? Um, because I wanted to speak to everybody. But it was this great, I felt like this gift of life. Oh my goodness. I wanted to speak to my brother-in-laws. I just wanted to speak to everybody just to, because I'm so happy. Um, and obviously um, it was... A few a week after that I had to go back to the doctor and that's when he told me that your tumor was cancerous mm. so I I immediately I was very emotional um, because I lost my mom to cancer and for me you know uh, before this it, it, um, you know the thing that people always say it's gonna happen to everybody else it won't happen to me and that's not what I, that's not how I thought, but I always wondered, um, you know, if that should knock on my door, mm. how I would react. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, um, it was hard. It was hard because my children are smaller. Sure. Mm. They don't really understand my eldest son. I think they were just going through the motion, you know, mommy's not well. Yeah. Um, how us, old, how old were they at that time? So my one son's 21. The other one was, uh, 13 uh, no 14 about 11 and then my daughter was two years ago so she was about six seven mm. 
um, and that in that time, you know, you you need the love and support, which I did. I, I got that. Alhamdulillah. Mm. You know, family came, cousins, my siblings were phenomenal. The friends were amazing. But I think the the one thing that was great for me was the fact that I was on I was on a cause at the moment called um, a journey of self discovery. Oh, okay. And I started that a few months and the cause was meant to be five months at that time. And the cause lasted a year because obviously I took a break. Yeah. But I believe that if I didn't, if I wasn't on that cause, my mindset and the way I re responded to this would have been a lot different. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, I wrote a little paragraph about um, how I felt. And um, in hospital, I found it in while I was there, I, I never missed my children. Subhanallah. And uh, I said this one day to um, Auntie Najmanisa and I said, you know what, is that wrong? Was, mm. was it, was it, we do you think it's weird? And she said, no, it's not. Because for once you thought of yourself and of no one else, mm. because that's what we do. It overflows how we put everybody else first. Especially as a mother. Yeah. Mm. And we lost in line. Mm. And um, you just needed to be with yourself and you needed to be there to kind of acknowledge that firstly, you now understand the definition of tawakul. That's the first thing. The second is how the gift of life and how blessed you are for a second chance because mm. not many get mm. second chances. Mm. So it is, it comes in twos. Um, you know, I had two sets of parents and a second chance to life. And I, what more can I ask for? Indeed, indeed. Now, so, so pre-op, right? You and your family decide to keep the dhikr, but you, you, you wanted the simplicity of 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 the gathering yeah um so what was the significance of simplicity in this context for you for me it was we sat and we were talking and my sisters because you know i mean we don't have a mom and we love to i'm a traditional we're very mm. traditional as a family and we were like oh let my um i remember my my uh, my sister naz she loves if she loves functions, anything for a function. <laughs> and uh, we were sitting and Matiti and myself and, and she says, let's have like a little bit of a dhikr, you know, just, um, you know, just to bring some more blessings and, yeah. and Alhamdulillah, that is basically, we didn't, I, I ha invited not many people, it was just family. I think it was very, very intimate. Um, and I think that I needed that. I needed that just before going on a really tough road. Um, you just need to constantly be reminded, you know, where you need to look back to. Mm, mm, indeed. Now, like you say, it was, a, it's a tough road. I want to journey through that tough road from the time now post-op. Um, then the real, of course, the real test really starts as well because now you need to put um, your trust in Allah, like really have to walk up. Because uh, yes, they've removed the tumor, but in the back of your mind, you probably still were thinking, has it spread? Um, will it reoccur? Did, did those thoughts ever cross your mind and how did you keep steadfast? You know, every time I go to my oncologist, um, the very first time we went, it was my sis my two sisters and my cousin. So my sisters were there to support me and my cousin was there to support them. And <laughs> she, whenever I get there, she says to me, oh, no entourage this time. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, every single time. So from that time, every three months, I went for a CT scan and I went for bloods and, um, that has been my journey yeah for the first time last year she put me off for six months but the im i meant to go to her actually tomorrow my appointment was rescheduled to next week yeah but that is it i normally don't tra tell anyone before i go because I'm already dealing with this, you know, exactly. and um, and all I just ask Allah, you know, the, the CT scan in itself is so scary. I oh know. my goodness, it's 
it's so scary. But um, when you're sitting there, your, your body just sometimes becomes lame. And you say, you know what, Allah, um, I, I love having these conversations. You've, you have to get me this time. Come now. You got me then. Just be there for me. Um, you know, I'm good. You know, you know where you are in, in me, <laughs> you know. So, alhamdulillah, yeah, um, it is. It's, it's really tough. I think when I come from there, I take five minutes because I become so lame. Just knowing that, alhamdulillah, I'm clear. Mm, um, mm. And I've been so fortunate because I didn't go for chemo or radiation. Um, and that, that was, you know, I, when the doctors, and, and the, the only reason why I never went was because they know nothing about this cancer. They're still busy investigating it. They're still trying to figure out, you know. Um, I will not forget, I also said, um, a friend of mine said to me, you always wanted to be one in a million. And I said, you know what? That's so true. Because one in one million people get this cancer. Get no cancer. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, I aced that one. One in a million. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, in your journey, Nadia, you mentioned the realization that not everyone would be happy for you. Or wish you well. So how did you handle these realizations? And what advice would you give others facing similar situations? Um, sure. Yes, very true. Um, and you see that when people, um, how they show up. For me, showing up is very important. I believe how you show up for anyone mm. um, is, is, is how... Is, is what the value that they that they add to your life. Mm. I think, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and make it sound all rosy. It's hard. It's hard for me. It's um, because I'm somebody that I, I want to be good. I want to, you know, love the world. I want to be, uh, you know, that Oprah that just, you know, <laughs> a year's one for you, year's one. But um, what I do is I just accept it as it is. And I, I genuinely um, love self, um, you know, I, I go for lots of causes. I go for mm. lots of classes. I love, I mean, fill your cup, do this, do that. So I'm always trying different things. And the one thing that it did um, change for me was how I dealt with people. And if I, if it's not about... Um, no, you not it for today. It's about what do I need today? I need positivity today. I do not need that today. So I'm not going to take on that today. Um, because my children um, and my situation, um, your job, everything, that is already, your cup is already overflowing with that. So what you add to that is so important and when you um, take two minutes of your time just to put yourself on top very very important where you see yourself and that is what I've started doing honestly that is what I started doing uh, what do I want to do I want to watch TV mm. or I want to lay here and do nothing and think about no one that's what I want to do and I'm sorry that you want me to come to you today, but mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing that. Mm -hmm. No offense. If people love you, they won't take offense. Right. They would understand where you're coming from. Good for you, Nadia. And I'm glad that you're sharing that. And I hope that um, um, the listeners are taking um, note and taking, you know, these are lessons that we need to learn. And especially the mothers, um, and, and you speaking as a mom, and obviously you are a mother. So yes, it's okay to have that me time. Um, quickly running to the WhatsApp line, Nadia, it says, I have the privilege of working with Nadia and she is truly a blessing to so many people. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. She might not know it, but it's because of the person she is that some of us wake up believing that if you make it through the night, there's truly a brighter day awaiting for you. Thanks and stay blessed, Nads. Oh, and that's oh. from your friend, Sohana. Okay. Or Sohana. <laughs> yes. yes, there we go. <laughs> and then um, let's just have a look. Um, uh, I'm so emotional. I didn't know this part of her life, says a listener. And so regret listening uh, to this now. I'm so emotional. The Arama Kinky. 
Now, I, I, um, I don't know. Now, I've just now just spoken to you for a for a short time, and I don't think um, Arama Kinky is what you are. No, you're a warrior. I am. I'm very. You know, a lot of people say. I think it's more the you know the older generations. I understand. You know, the Faisal's probably gonna also say, "Ah, my Arama Kinky." Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. Um, that is something that we understand. We appreciate yeah. that you see that we are amazing. You see that, you know, no matter what you do in your life um, is great. And and that's what I think they mean. I, I think it's it's more so um, that we are so, so grateful that you've overcome all these challenges. Yeah, yeah. yeah indeed. I want to perhaps end on, on this question. And, and, and I think it's going to be so beneficial for, for, for everyone to, to hear your answer to this. So you also mentioned, you know, choosing your battles carefully and speaking less. Mm. And and I'm I'm saying it slowly because like I said, this is a lesson for us all. So how did the shift in behavior affect your relationships and most important, Nadia, your personal growth? Um, so sometimes, uh, you know, the saying less is more. Um, that is really true. And the one thing that I've learned is that you find Allah in your stillness when the silence and sometimes uh you know uh, i if if you know me very busy oh busy with everybody else's stuff besides my own you know but i am appreciative of the fact that i have genuinely um found my god in this and there was a reason why he needed me to go through this in the time that I went through it and I'm so blessed and I want to say to people you know just take time take be still listen more we we never give somebody else the opportunity to speak we always know better we want to say more we want no just sometimes shh. and in that stillness you will hear somebody's heartbeat most of the time and I say um, I'd like to say thank you to to my to my friend is more a friend than than a colleague as Sokana because you know when you around people of greatness you attract greatness and that is um, where I'm at at this point in time I want to also just say that be you every single day root for yourself first and then for everybody else. Indeed, we have to leave it there, but I'm quickly going to um, read out the messages that have come through. An absolute blessing in my life. This woman is a gem, says a Donna. Oh, oh. <laughs> thank <laughs> and you, And then just very quickly, Salams, bravo, Nadia. I might be the smallest person loving you and missing you and missing, but I'm your biggest fan, MFK. Oh, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so Nadia, I want to say thank you very much once again for um, coming into studio. We love it. And all of the best uh, to you, inshallah. inshallah More inshallah. messages coming through. I know, Saeed, I know. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to, I want to acknowledge the WhatsApps. You know, I, I love it when, when our listeners take the time to WhatsApp us. So we acknowledge. Subhanallah, Nadia, you're so inspirational. May Allah grant her complete cure. Amin. 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 Ya Rabbil Alameen to that dua, inshallah. And um, may you be granted complete cure and afia, inshallah. Amin, inshallah. And stay amazing. Shukran. Shukran. Fantastic. <laughs> Is there something else you wanted to say? I just want to say shukran so much to you and to the technician, to the producer of Radio 786. Uh, continue being awesome. It's an absolute pleasure. Our uh, very own, like I said, cancer survivor, warrior woman, Nadia Hamildin, sharing her journey and her life uh, story with us. So we are very grateful. And that was our Up Close and Personal with Nadia Hamildin.